So I've changed the size of the flat that I'm going to demonstrate this on. It's a bigger flat. The, it's, a, it's a 3 by 12 instead of a 2 by 8 It's uh, got a few more challenges. I thought it would be more interesting. As the flats get smaller, they get easier to do. So this is the face of the flat with no keystones or corner blocks that the fabric will sit against. When you put the sizing, the 50% glue water mixture, on the flat, on the canvas, it will glue itself to any bare wood. So your goal is to wax and seal the face of all the toggles. Every single toggle gets completely paraffin wax, and this is just paraffin wax from canning. Um, I found it harder to find the slabs. They've most of the ones I where I am now, they only have beads, so I have to look for more of it. But uh, the 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 styles and the toggles, you don't want to do the whole uh, width of the pine. You only want to do the the kind of onboard half of it. The the outside half and the uh, the edges and the back you don't want to put any wax on them you want the actual glue water mixture to glue the canvas to the wood so you work your way around you can see it if you kind of lean back and forth just a little you can see the different shine between the wax and the and the in the non-waxed and your goal is to make sure you have a pretty decent coating on all the styles and rails on the onboard side, not on the outside half, not on the edges, not on the back. And then the toggles, you want to make sure every face is done really, really well. Once you've done that, then you can move on to uh, attaching the, uh, the canvas to the flat. So one of the things I notice is that if I go from toggle to style or rail and back again, because I'm doing the full width of the toggle, I'm getting a fairly flat, even edge along the wax. But when I move to the side of the, the style, I end up getting a ridge. And if I move then back to a toggle, I'll end up with a gap in the middle. So what I want to do is uh, do all of the toggles and then do all the outside pieces. So I imagine if you couldn't find uh, paraffin wax, a big slot or a square of paraffin wax, a rectangle of uh, paraffin wax, then you could grab yourself a big candle. As long as it's clear, you wouldn't want to use a colored candle because that would transfer through. Wax is wax. I'm pretty sure it'll seal the same way. Though I haven't done it, it seems to make good sense. I flipped over the frame. You can see the corner blocks and the keystones are up. And I've uh, the fabric's still on the bench. And what you want to ensure is that you have at least this much all the way around the perimeter of the flat. Um, so you can have something to grab onto. You can do it with like two inches, but having a little bit more makes it easier just to pull on it. So um, what I want to ensure on a big flat like this is I'm going to start by clipping it in place. just so I know it doesn't slip. And then once I've got this clipped, I go to the other side when I'm ready to staple or where I'm gonna be ready to staple and I start the, that process over there. So all I've done is I've walked to the other side of the flat and I'm ensuring I have enough fabric here, which I do. And I'm gonna start in the middle. And the goal is to start Apparently my dogs found something to bark at. I'm going to start in the middle and I'm going to put my first staple about a half inch in as close to center as I can, just eyeball it. And the goal here is to do about six inches or so of stapling right here on the middle, move to the opposite side, do six inches, pick a side, uh, long side, do you know a foot or so there, do the other side and all I'm doing is I'm gonna work my way to the corners. Keep going opposite, getting wider, working my way to the corners, and then once I get to the corners, I'll, uh, I'll finish off the corners. Okay, maybe eight inches. So I'm on the other side here, and I'm just gonna take these off. I no longer need them. 
mild amount of tension, not very much at all. The center of this is still well wrinkled. And I'm going to move to this side. I could be either side at this point. Now I have quite a lot of fabric here. It's too much fabric for me to work with. I could do it, but I'm not in the mood to. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start a rip here. Yeah, it'll be fine. And then I just tear right along. And if I have this on a slight angle, it might get a little closer, and if it does, I might stop and recompute, but this is still plenty to grab with. When you're ripping like this, when you're ripping like this, one of the things that can happen is it can change direction and all of a sudden start going on a 90 degree one way or the other. So it's not just a willy-nilly rip, it's a, a bit more of a controlled rip. When I lift this up, you can see how loose this is. I don't really want to go much tighter than that. If I, if I go tighter than that, there's an excellent chance when it sizes, it'll rip, right? it'll rip the fabric. And so now I've done the opposite side, I can actually make this one a little wider. Now, as I'm working along, my non-stapler hand is towards the loose part of the fabric, and I'm kind of pulling in and along as I do it. And every pull now is towards a corner. So I don't want to staple past too far into this, the, the keystone. So I'm kind of stopping about here. And then that's enough for me to get to the point. So when I get to the, the corners, I still have enough play. If you staple too much to the corner before you uh, clean it up, it's kind of a pain. It's, you can't really do it. You'll have to pull some staples.
So what I'm going to do now is uh, I'm going to bring in close so you can see how I'm going to finish off a corner.